صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العبدة من لسان يفقه قولي دور شيف الله Respected brothers, respected elders, mothers and sisters listening at home, we have been covering the history of Baladur Rasul, Madinatul Rasul, the city which is named after Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Madinatul Rasul, the blessed city which is known as Madina Munawwara, Taba and Tayyiba. Madinatul Munawwara is that chosen city. The difference between Madinatul Munawwara and all the other cities in the world is that Islam had entered Madinatul Munawwara even before Ab sallallahu alayhi wasallam's entry to that city. Virtually all the Arab tribes were Muslims excluding the, the Jews that were living there. Majority of the Arab tribes were all Muslims, even before Ab Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's entry there. A blessed city, a city which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose for His Messenger as a refuge. And the Ansari companions were prepared to sacrifice anything for Huzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Whatever his commandment was, they were prepared to carry that out. Subhanallah. And this is what you call Iman. Iman is he forget it. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala an was that fortunate Sahabi who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from all the companions. And he served Huzur alayhi salatu was salam for the first few days. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in his house. And alhamdulillah, uh, everything has been mentioned with regards to Huzur alayhi salatu was salam's house in Madinatul Munawwara when he came. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's first mission in Madinatul Munawwara. Huzur alayhi salatu was salam ka sabse pehla kaam. What did he do? The Mu'arrikheen have said that Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Madinatul Munawwara and for a few days he would go and visit the different areas of Madinatul Munawwara. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's intention was to look for the right buk'ah, for the right piece of land, for the right area in which he could construct that masjid. The masjid will be named the masjid that will be named after him, Masjid Nabwi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is why it is very important for the Muslim community that they, they must not just construct a masjid in any area where one pleases, but it should be in, in the midst of a Muslim community where the masjid can be visited, frequented, and Alhamdulillah, uh, that is very, very important. When you go to America, it's quite difficult. But in England, Alhamdulillah, all the masajid are more enough in the right area. Even this masjid has now become small. But I remember when we went to America in, I think it was 1991 to perform Taraweeh there in Hagerstown. The closest person living... Uh, close to the masjid, the, the, the house that was close to the masjid was approximately 25 miles. <laughs> 25 miles. And he was the closest to the masjid. So one can imagine when we got there, uh, in the beginning there was a problem with visas for the person who was going to come with me to perform taraweeh there. And his coming there was delayed, so we had to perform 20 rakats for about 10 days there. And I was all alone in this building. <laughs> and 
all of them would come when it was Asr Salat. So they would come before Asr, stay there until Maghrib, make Iftari there, stay till Isha, perform Tarawi, go home, and perform Tahajjud, and then go home. Basically only one or two, three people would be there for Fajr Salat and for Zohar. But this is the sacrifice. Alhamdulillah, uh, Islam comes after sacrifice. So the first mission for Huzur alayhi salatu was salam was the construction of Masjid e Nabwi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The first man on the face of this earth, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, is the first man to construct the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is mentioned in the Quran. In the awwala baytin, in the awwala baytin, the first building to stand on the face of this earth. Which building was it? Not the Taj Mahal or anything like that. It was Kaaba. In the awwala baytin, the first house. Adam alayhi salatu was salam came. It was the hukam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the order. The first man, his first mission was again to build the Kaaba. Building the masjid is the sunnah of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, masjid aqsa Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the reconstruction of Kaaba, Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself physically he took part in the building of masjid in Abu'i. Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu was salam built Khana Kaaba in the awwala bayt in Wudi al Nas, the first building, uh, um, the foundation that was laid down in this world was Khana Qaba bi Bakka in the city of Makkah Mubaraka which is blessed Hudal lil Alameen which is uh, a source of guidance for all the mankind Subhanallah I remember was it just a few was it last week when we went in one area and there were a lot of people there on one side there was all kuffar and, and music attraction so all the kuffar were there when you're outside even sometimes in the city center you have all these shows and I was walking past and there was this on the subject of hidayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wudi alin nas lalladhi bi bakkata mubaraka wa hudallil alameen and khana kaaba is the means of hidayat for all the mankind a group of people were on one side and I was walking on this other side there was this West Indian brother he met me and he looked at me and he said to me oh my you have a massive beard <laughs> I mean you know this is very dari to me then he looked at me he said to me you can't be a Jew I said no I'm not a Jew he says, you're a Muslim, aren't you? He has a Muslim name, Muslim. <laughs> I said, yes, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. He says, yes, well, the Jews have a beard also. He says, well, the Jews have a beard, the Muslims have a beard. The Jews were supposed to become Muslims. They were stubborn, so they don't want to become Muslims. That beard is not accepted. Only the beard of Islam is accepted. And he started to laugh. He said to me, you know, I am a man who has studied Islam. And he wanted to speak on different subjects of Islam. Women's rights, the covering of the face, the hijab. I said to him, let's go on one side and let's talk. Subhanallah. There was so much noise on the other side, like music. So I said to him, let's go on this side. shopping center Some of them have their own shows, even outside on the streets. And you are doing your work. And I, and I was there, he had a few questions. So I was talking with him, talking with him. And he said to me that I've read the Quran. I said, if you've read the Quran, then have you understood the Quran? He says, yes, I've understood the Quran. He said to me, I have a few questions. Answer it for me. We were there for about... 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Subhanallah. On the one side, the shaitan is there with his music. And the, on the other side, this man is reciting the shahada in front of me. And he became a Muslim. 
Baza? Kaha mulakat? What kind of a meeting was he? He maybe he was even joking. But when you talk to him, when you were when that communication started, that is the time you understand how sincere that man was. How sincere he was. And after uttering the words, the creed, the shahada, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, he embraced me. This is hidayah. On one side it is the shayatin, on the other side a man is reciting the kalima. And this is the qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we have to be very very careful. This article uh, that someone gave me when I was reading it I was so shocked and, and this is not even a, a Muslim magazine on the subject of we don't want to look at Qusay and Uday <laughs> with Saddam in the middle what happened to Qusay and Uday they were no angels but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of the unseen and uh, we believe that any Muslim any Muslim who dies in the condition of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, one day he will enter Jannah. Allah knows best. Subhanallah. Politics is politics, many as you And the amount of effort the missionaries are putting into Muslim countries, shocking. The missionaries under cover. See, when our Tablighi brothers go everywhere around the world, they only go for four months maximum. A few who go for one year, very few, four months, and then you come back. But these missionaries, they go for five years, ten years, some master the language, and they are there. Go to Africa, and first they were concentrating on Latino countries. Now, the full concentration is on Muslim countries. The amount of missionaries here, each Muslim country, as many as 27,000 professional missionaries. And the missionary is so perfect, they wear a topi, they have a beard. And a lot of them have even mastered the Arabic language. And when they meet you, they say, Assalamu alaikum, kayf al hal, tayyib. And when you read the entire article, some of the Muslims have even been deceived and they said to a Christian that you are a better Muslim than I am. Whilst they are Christians. They, Morocco, Algeria, Mali, Nigeria, Chad, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. Yemen, Oman, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, India, Malaysia, Indonesia, every country, wherever you go, especially in Africa, and especially after the army entering Muslim countries, there is a flood of uh, all these missionaries. Flood, ekhi maksad. Army to waha hai. The first thing when Afghanistan was taken over with, the, with their police, with their people in control you had missionaries there walking and giving da'wah of Christianity Albania, Mawlana Khalil Saab went and all MashaAllah group of people that go from here Muslim children were given gifts a crucifix, cross food, pesa, anything and a chain the name of the child is Muhammad. The name of the child is Ibrahim. And what is happening to, to the Muslims? We are fighting. Oh, you are a Devbandi. Oh, you are a Salafi. Oh, you are a Barelvi. And that is it. We have crippled ourselves. Fighting on little, little things. Jahan jihad karna hai, wahan jihad nahi karna. Jahan jihad karna chahe, wahan jihad nahi karti. Subhanallah. And look at this. We talk about Palestine. There's this brother whose name is Sam, who's 46 years of age. Sam claims to have led more than 100 Palestinians to Christ. 
This one man, Sam, 46 years of age, says that he has converted 100 Palestinian Muslims to Christianity. آپ تو خوش ہوئے ہوں گے نا مولوی صاحب سبحان اللہ آپ نے ایک آدمی کو کلمہ پر آیا کتنے آدمی کو ایک آدمی کو بٹ لک اٹ ورک ان دا مٹس پیلسٹائن کنیکٹڈ ٹو ابراہیم علیہ السلام این آل دا پروفٹس بیت الحم بیسٹ علی ہیم وچ از بیت الحم دیٹ بلانگس ٹو آور پروفٹس سیدنا عیسا علیہ السلاۃ والسلام ہمارے پیغمبر پاک پیغمبر The messenger of Allah was born there. 100 Palestinians, just this one man. Under these guys, then there are the apparent attempt, attempts by some missionaries to camouflage their faith as a kind of Islam, inviting prospective converts to Jesus mosques. What do they Jesus mosques. Or publicly reciting the Muslim creed, like the Qadianis do, لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. There is no God but God and Muhammad is His Prophet. Such techniques are rationalized as part of contextualization. Contextualization. The hila, this is jail. So there's a person in front of you is actually saying لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. And that is why as Muslims we have to make sure we have done our homework. We have done our these are just some of the pictures uh, uh, and you have negative pictures here hostages, missionaries in the Philippines for 16 years kitne? 16 saal ke liye man Philippines ke liye we have a good population of Muslims in China even today subhanallah even in, in Russia what is happening? how do they enter these countries? it's fine when Muslims have a job, Islam is also a missionary religion, and it's fine, we have this freedom. But we have to make sure that the Muslims in Muslim countries are educated, the Iman, the level of Iman is strong. Majority of these missionaries who enter, they get visa not on the basis that they are doing any religious work there, but they go there as English teachers. And, and we Muslims, we become Lattu over English. Remember that story of Maulana Zulfiqar Sahib? When the father said to him, my son knows how to speak. What does your son know? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are or what you are, Allah knows. And Maulana said, now say, la ilaha illallah, he said, my son doesn't know the kalim. My son doesn't know the this is very normal. You go to Saudi Arabia, you go to Pakistan. If you know English, oh, mashallah, highly educated, very clever. Khak? Khak? What, what educated? You don't even know which finger to use when you do istinja. You are educated. What education? On the basis that you know English, you are an educated person? This sickness that is inside the Muslims, it is a sickness. That Anguta Chaap, the one who is illiterate, but who is Paban, who, who is obedient to his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the greatest intellect on the face of this earth. Subhanallah. Even Abu Lahab knew Arabic. Abu Jahl knew Arabic. What happened to them? What has happened? Because they knew Arabic, they went to Jannah? No. Jahannam. In the Akramakum in the Allahi Atqakum. Our thinking is wrong. We are proud. My son is there, mashallah. Even in India, the parents have to pay such a high fee just to send their uh, children to schools which have English medium there. I'm not saying we should not study. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't take the wrong picture. I'm saying study, subhanAllah. We have to study. But first, we have to make sure that Iman, Islam is strong and firm in our hearts, my brothers. That is so important. Very difficult. Today, somebody was telling me that he, he was uh, looking at some of the, the channels and he came across this Kadiani channel there. And he said that the, the, the person there 
who is supposed to be their scholar, the Qadiani scholar. He says, we believe in khatm e We believe in khatm e And And the way he spoke, that even that Sunni Muslim, uh, an element of doubt perhaps might have entered his heart. That why should we call these people kuffar when they are saying clearly, and it's televised, that Huzur alayhi salatu was salam is khatamun nabiyyin, he is the last messenger, then why do these people go around? These maulanas and ulama giving fatwa that they are kafir, why? In their mas- well, it's not masjid, in the ibadat khana it says la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is dhoka, this is munafiqeen. This is the same dhoka that we see. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُوا إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ when they came to the Prophet, they would say, Oh, you are the messenger of Allah. Wallahu ya'lamu inna kana rasul. Allah knows you are the messenger. Allah knows that. Wallahu yashhad inna al munafikina lakadibun. But Allah testifies, Allah gives shahada. These people that are coming in front of you, they are munafikin hypocrites. And hypocrites will come until the day of Qiyamah. Subhanallah. And they say, I won't take much of your time, my respected brothers. And this is something very, very important. Here we have a, a missionary dressed up like a dekhena. If somebody looked at him, you'd probably say that he's a, a radical Muslim <laughs> with that scarf on. But what has he got in his hand? Huh? Al-Kitabul Muqaddasa. In the Arabic language, they say the Muqaddas Kitab, which is the Bible, according to them. Now here it talks about this lady. She entered this class in New York, where a group of missionaries were there in her burqa in New York. She wasn't a Muslim, but she would do for now. Last March, at just about the time American troops were massing outside Baghdad, she shuffled, dressed in a dark burqa into a cramped class schoolroom in the New York City. The class she was addressing was organized by the U.S. Center for World Mission and packed with eager evangelical Christian students wanting to learn how to become missionaries in foreign country. The black-clad Shafira was gamely trying to explain her faith. It is not in the heart of all Muslims to have violence. Now she has come into this class where all these missionary students are there in a burqa disguised and it's all an act, and she's teaching them everything, how you should work with the Muslim community. As soon as she enters the class, this is what she's saying. She's saying that not all Muslims are violent. She said in broken English, alluding immediately to September 11, so sorry that people have, have been dying. I'm wanting peace for my children. I'm thinking you wanting peace. It's the same. She listed Islam's is five pillars of faith and noted that holy war is not among them. We have a lot in common, she said, but she did wonder, but she did wonder about the Trinity. God, Father plus God, Mary equals God's Son. Right. A student thrilled at the opportunity to explain, jumped in after listening patiently, Shafira peeled her burqa and she said, I'm not a true Muslim, hardly. In fact, she was a long time Christian missionary in Muslim lands. Mm-hmm. Okay. Over the next three hours, her name was Barbara, minus her burqa, dispensed comparisons between Jesus and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She is comparing her with Isa alayhi salam with Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The do's and the do nots of ministering to Muslims. Do listen to their story. Don't argue about Israel. When you talk to a Muslim, don't argue about, be patient. The first thing the Muslims will talk about is the oppression that comes from Israel. So listen to them. She relayed a statement by U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft. What did he say? Islam is a religion in which God requires you to send your son to die for him. Christianity is a faith in which God sends his own son to die for you. (laughs) Okay? This is Islam. After his comment was publicized in the late 
2000, Ashcroft said it referred to terrorists and not to mainstream Muslims. But the point seemed lost on Barbara. What did she say? Barbara, to, she, she is very strong in her words. She says, Islam is the terrorist. She asserted Muslims are the victims. The class ended in prayer with one per person saying, we mourn the loss of life in Iraq, added Barbara. We pray that the weapon of mass destruction and Islam be torn down. Goya baddua uski zaman se. Kya kar rahi Baddua. That we pray that weapons of mass destruction are, is found and Islam is torn down. Lord, we declare that your blood is enough to forgive every single Muslim. Is tarikhe se baat ho we have to be very, very careful, my respective brothers. Here we have we Muslim countries and the Islamic system there, subhanAllah. We have become so westernized, so westernized that today we take pride in uh, secular education over Islamic education. And here if you read the entire story, so many Muslims have converted to Christianity. So many Muslims. Allah, Allah Rabbul Alameen, Tawfiq Day, many Azizam. Here we have a picture of a, a Muslim student in the Arabic language reading a Bible, Al Kitabul Muqaddasa. We feel that today, Alhamdulillah, no, nothing can happen. Our Iman is intact. There is no guarantee, my respected brothers. If you look at the Qadianis, how the Qadianis are working, you will be shocked. Intellectual people, professional people, those who were frequenting the masjid, those who have performed hajj, those who have understood the ahadith, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away guidance. And they have become Qadianis, or they have become Christians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiq day. The first masjid was built by Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu was salam an area where until today alhamdulillah guidance comes out in all four corners of the world Abu sallallahu alayhi wasallam's mission again was to build in the city of Madinatul Munawwara a beautiful masjid exemplary in its simplicity Abu sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked at different areas in Madinatul Munawwara Abu sallallahu alayhi wasallam chose uh, a simple land that was there that belonged to two orphans and the name of the orphans were Sahal and Suhail. Sahal and Suhail, they were under the care of their uncle. And Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met the uncle, Huzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, said to them that I'm interested in that area to build a masjid there. Straight away the two orphans said to Huzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, we are the owners of this land, you can take it as hadiyah. Huzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam refused. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no This is the haq of a yateem And Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala To pay the right amount for that land The mu'arrikheen have said in the seerah kutubs That Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala Paid 10 dinars for that land It was a small area, only 10 Dinar, and that was the first construction. Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself laid down the foundation. Uzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam would lift up uh, mud stones. All the companions participated, the Muhajireen and the Ansari. That is why Uzur Alaihi Salatu Wasallam was making dua for all the companions that were there. Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's dua was, Allahumma inna al ajra ajrul akhira, farham al Ansara wal Muhajira. Allah give give mercy shower down your mercy to the muhajireen and to the ansari companions even mashallah in Leicester today we see some of the youth some of the young people who a lot of the musalli might not even notice but they are there anytime anytime whenever there is any type of job for the masjid the youth are there the youth are there Subhanallah, working voluntarily, fi sabilillah. And Huzur alayhi salatu was salam, he says, when you see someone frequenting, frequenting the masjid, give shahadat of their iman. Give shahadat of their iman. Subhanallah. Hazrat Uthman bin Maz'oon also participated in 
mashallah carrying the stones to Huzur alayhi salatu wasalam. Hazrat Osman bin Maz'oon was one man who was very, very hygiene conscious. He would not do anything. Painting was not in his agenda. <laughs> very clean sahabi. Very clean. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala was there. All the companions were there. Hazrat Ali was there looking for Hazrat Osman bin Maz'oon. Okay, let us see, is he there today? Working with with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Hazrat Osman was very very careful. Each stone that he would pick up, making sure that his kurta is clean, kurta. And this was not out of takabbur. This was his temperament. This was his tabiat. Like I said to you, Imam Ahmad bin Hamal would have 365 new pairs of clothes every day. He would wear something very clean, very clean. No one does that today. Every day new suit. Every day new suit. Subhanallah. At Maghrib time a miskin would come on the door of Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal would give that to him as hadiyah. And who is Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal? When his janazah was being lifted up, the janazah was passed from an area where the Christians were living. It is said that 25,000 Christians became Muslim just by simply looking at his janazah. How many? 25,000. This is the janazah of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. This is how clean he was. Hamesha. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullah alayhi. Again, with his clothes. Marana, uh, there was a Buzurub. Hazrat Mirza Jane Jana Rahmatullah His tabiyat was ajeeb. If he saw anything that was not in its proper place, he would get severe pain in the head. A towel had a muscle and towel. The towel should be clean and in its right position. And if it goes a bit low down, and if he looks at it, it get a headache. This is the nazakat he had. The sensitivity that was inside it. Well, he was a great buzrut, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a wife who was extremely the opposite to him. She would even swear at the wind. She would even swear at the wind. No respect for the Jani Jana, Mirza Jani Jana, Rahmatullah. The minute he entered the house, Hazrat would shut the doors and say, and he would say to the murid, now you go out. And when he would be in the house, the wife would say, what have you done? You have murids, people say you are a buzrug, you are an allama, you are nothing. I know who you are, you are fooling and deceiving the world, this and that. I'm not going to cook the food for you today, go out, do this. Sometimes it is said that she would even hit Hazrat Ahmadullah one of the murid said, why are you wasting your time with this woman? The lady is maybe listening at home. Allah Rahmatullah Ali said that, I don't think no man in the world has got the patience for this woman. If I take her out from my nikah, she will only go to another Muslim brother and she will only trouble my Muslim brother. It's better that she troubles me. I have the patience. I have the these were akabirin. These were great people. That is why when a Brahman Hindu came to him uh, and looked at the Pishani, the forehead of Hazrat Mirza Jani Jana Rahmatullah Alayhi, and the Brahman, again, because of his high meditation, he could see a lot of things. And, and we've gone through all that. Shaitan, magic, and the karamat is different from all that. And he looked at Hazrat Jani Jana Rahmatullah he says, I see darkness on your forehead. I see darkness on your forehead, on the forehead of Hazrat Mirza Jani Jana Rahmatullah. Hazrat Mirza Jani Jana Rahmatullah Ali said to him that, how did you acquire such a high position? He says, I would do everything against my desire, against my nafs, everything. That is why I can see through things. Sometimes I can even see what is in the heart of an individual. I can see darkness on your forehead. Allah Rahmatullah Ali looked at him, now truthfully tell me, is your heart saying that you want to become a Muslim? So he says, no. He says, now go against your nafs. 
go against your Allah. Is your heart saying that you should bow down to Allah and to surrender to Allah and to obey the Sharia of Rahmatul Lil Alameen, Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And he said, No. As I looked at him with the tawajjuh, he says, Then, truthfully, all these years you have done everything against your desire, your nafs, you are in full control of your nafs. So go against your nafs. He was an honest man. And he says, Hazrat, I will recite the kalima in front of you and as from today, I am a Muslim. He took Hazrat's hand and got back to him, made bay'a to Hazrat and also recited the shahada on the hands of Hazrat Mirza Jami Jami Rahmatullah and he said to Hazrat that my teachers, the Hindu yogis, were telling me that on your forehead in your forehead Pishani par, we see the noor of Islam we are seeing the noor, the light of Islam my one teacher said that to me Subhanallah so Mirza Jani Jana Rahmatullah Ali told him now sit in front of me and look at my forehead can you see that darkness now he was a Muslim and he looked at Hazrat Mirza Jani Jana Rahmatullah Ali he says Hazrat now I can see light on your forehead on your face he says, how is that? He says, a mu'min, the, the, the forehead of a, a believer, of a wali, is a mirror for that person in front of him. So you were actually looking at your own forehead, not at my forehead. Very peshani kuni, darkness was because of you. Now that you have uttered the shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, the light you see is your own light. Huh? We're talking on the subject of nazakat, sensitivity. Yeah, that Osman bin Maz'oon was there, very careful. Grand sahabi. Itne bare sahabi, subhanallah. Huh? And Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and looked at him. Uh, so Hazrat Osman was there carrying stones. So Hazrat Ali said to him, Ya Osman, Osman, to carry the stone and the mud stones for the building of the masjid is better for you than not to carry it. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala started to laugh. So everyone was there, mashallah, participated in the building of Masjid al This was the first uh, extension to that main area, the, the Jamaat Khana, the prayer hall. Very, very simple. The second extension of Masjid al was when uh, Khaybar was conquered in the year 7 Hijri. Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to make an extension and the plot next door belonged to a, an Ansari Sahabi who was a, a poor Sahabi, miskeen the, fakir the. Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made an announcement in the masjid I'll only take a few more minutes of yours Abu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the companions that anyone who buys that plot, purchases that plot from that Ansari companion Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will reward him with a mansion in Jannat but that area, the prices went up by then. In the time of the Abu Bakr Siddiq, it was 10 dinar. Then, subhanAllah, the, the price of that land, and obviously it was very big as compared to the area that Abu Bakr Siddiq had purchased. The keynote of that area, the building, the, the empty land that was next door to Masjid Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was worth 40,000 dirhams. Mm. 40,000 years ago. Musa Bai, Subhanallah. Ji. Who had that much money at that time? Khalid, Hazrat Uthman. A wealthy man he was. One is to have wealth and one is to have the power to give out. You have the money. Some people have the money, but Allah, but they can't give out. Some people don't have the money, but still they can give out. Some people have money and they give out. I remember one thing, my respected brothers, the more you give, the more Allah gives you. Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala went to the Sahabi, gave him 40,000 dirham cash. Cash. Went to Huzur alayhi salatu wa salam, ya Rasulullah. That empty area, next neighboring the masjid, masjid in Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
is now yours, Ya Rasulullah, you can do whatever you want. The extension of the masjid you can do, but with one condition, the dua that you made, that if I, if anybody who buys that area, that empty land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return will reward him with a mansion in Jannat. Huzur alayhi salatu wasalam looked at Asman and laughed at Hazrat Asman, smiled at him. He says, Asman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that beautiful mansion in Jannat. Asa khush naseeb sahabi te. InshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue from where we have left off today. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم إنا رسلك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا رسلك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير برحمتك يا رحمة الله